So who's my favourite ever player from each championship club? Let's talk about it. Guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. Now, as we didn't have any championship football going on over the weekend, I thought we'd switch it up a little bit for today's video, and I'm going to be counting down my personal favourite ever player from each championship club. Now, I've only set myself one rule for today's video, and that's that the player that I pick can no longer play for your team. So it's my favourite ever player, not the player that's currently playing for your football team. I want to know down below who's your favourite ever player to play for your club and ones from other championship clubs who you've also been fond of over the years. If we could hit 300 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. But without any further ado, let's jump into this one. I'm really looking forward to it. Barnsley, Ian Hume. Now, he won the love of, uh, I think, a lot of neutrals from his time at Barnsley. He fractured his skull there, and it was feared at the time whether he'd be able to go on and continue his playing career. He did get himself back up and going um, after Barnsley made his move to Preston North End. I love the guy so much. I got him on the back of one of my North End shirts, but he was that guy who gave you 100%. He wore his heart in his sleeve, could score goals from inside, outside the box, and I think wherever Ian Hume's been, most people have been quite fond of him. Birmingham, I'm going to go with Joe Hart, which may come as a bit of a surprising pick, but I remember being so fond of him at the time. Birmingham went on that run of, you know, quite successful goalkeepers they had there. It was Joe Hart, followed by Ben Foster, followed by Jack Butland, so really um, the string of in England internationals in that sense, but Joe Hart was at the stage of his career when he had that loan spell to Birmingham where he was still quite an up-and-coming prospect, you know, I didn't know too much about him at the time, but some of the saves he pulled off, he was such an acrobatical goalkeeper because of how young he was at the time and desperate to prove himself and I just have memories of really being quite impressed with him um, back in the day and from that point onwards I think that most people realised he will go on to become England's number one. Blackburn Rovers, Roque, Santa Cruz. I've got so many memories of me as a youngster, you know, settling down in bed to watch match of the day and every week it seemed like Roque, Santa Cruz would pop up with a goal for Blackburn Rovers. He's really the player that stands out in my mind um, in terms of like nostalgia and watching Blackburn back in the day in the Premier League. Obviously these days they've got their other um, South American superstar putting them in the back of the net for them but I didn't realise just how prolific he was for Blackburn scored uh, 23 goals in his best season for them and he's a bit of a Premier League icon in some senses isn't he Blackpool Richard Kingston now one of the very few Blackpool players that I've been fond of over the years has been Richard Kingston for I mean one of the trivial reasons being the fact that he wore a snood in that sort of era where it was cool to do that you know taking after like Carlos Tevez I thought that any football that's rocking a snood I can already get on board with. But I just found it quite cool back in the day that Blackpool had signed, you know, Ghana's number one. You know, he'd just come back off um, a World Cup with Ghana in South Africa. Whether or not he was actually any good for Blackpool on the pitch is probably another discussion. But for me personally, I always quite like Richard Kingston. Bournemouth, Callum Wilson, for one reason and one reason only fantasy football. He absolutely saved my bacon um, for a few years, I think, at Bournemouth, but that one season especially when it was Wilson linking up with Fraser. Bournemouth were actually quite an entertaining side to watch for the vast majority of their spell in the Premier League and the one player that I always sort of looked out for during that time was Callum Wilson, prolific in the Championship as well. Bristol City, I've gone for Luke Freeman. Now, I've got quite a few fond memories of that Bristol City promotion side from League One to the Championship as obviously Preston were promoted alongside Bristol City that year so there were a few players in that squad that I was thinking of but for me personally I've always had a fondness for Luke Freeman Preston and um, when we appointed Graham Wesley seemed to be cherry picking loads of Stevenage players at the time and the one player who I always wanted us to go in for was Luke Freeman but Bristol City beat us to that signature and was absolutely brilliant in that season and that promotion season from League One and has since gone on to be a really good championship player. Cardiff City I'm going to go for Ross McCormack I think he caught your eye straight away with that number 44 shot that first season he had in Wales he was absolutely fantastic at scoring 23 goals the season after when they made it to the playoff final he sort of took a back seat for that one when I think it was Chopra and Bothroyd as the main two um, for that season but McCormack was such a good player to watch you know could score inside outside the box could take a free kick was good and skillful on the ball and obviously was enjoyable from his time at Leeds and Fulham as well Coventry I'm going for Joe Cole there were a few Coventry players of years gone by who I did have in the back of my mind you know quite a few um, brilliant youngsters have come up through that 
Academy, but it was such a cool story back in the day when this one seemed to come out of nowhere. You know, Joe Cole, you know, the Premier League player that I'd seen growing up as a kid, had ended up in League One with commentary, and he was, you know, winding down at this stage, coming towards the end of his career, but he still had some moments. Um, I think just played over 20 games from his time at Coventry, scored a fantastic free kick against Barnsley. It was Joe Cole playing in League One. That was just so cool. Derby County, I'm going for Johnny Russell. I remember when Preston first came back up to the championship in 2015. We played Derby quite early on in that season and that was really the moment when I realised, okay, there's quite the jump up between League One football and the championship and that was mainly due to Johnny Russell who absolutely ripped us apart one weekend at Deepdale. There was one assist he got um, for Chris Martin who scored the brace in that game. He sort of cr it runs past our player then crosses it in from such a deep position but it's such a worldy of a ball and perfectly weighted that from that point onwards I always just had a bit of a fondness for Johnny Russell really. Fulham, the answer is Dimitar Berbatov and there are no two ways about this. This was probably one of my most cemented picks for this video here today but what a player Dimitar Berbatov was to watch back in the day. Even when he was at Fulham and he perhaps wasn't still um, at the very peak of his career he was still incredible. Scored 15 goals in that first Premier League season with Fulham and the way that he was just so nonchalant about everything you know he just wander and walk around the pitch you'll see highlight reels every now and again of just some of the first touches that he takes because that in itself was such an enjoyable part um, of his career to watch throughout the years but magnificently skillful and just by the way he went about the game you can't help but loving the player like Dimitar Berbatov. Huddersfield Town I think I'm going to go for Aaron Moy I think for me personally the Huddersfield side that I've enjoyed watching most um, you know from growing up to now was that promotion season um, from the championship to the Premier League in another couple of years they had actually in the Premier League and Aaron Moy during that spell was absolutely fantastic. Talk about a midfielder who was like too good for the level at that time, who just saw the complete game in front of him. And I think that this was the sort of time where I'd appreciate, you know, holding midfielders a little bit more because I think the older you get, the more you sort of understand about that role a little bit. But what a player Aaron Moy was, wasn't he? Hull City, I think I'm just going to give it to Giovanni. He was a Brazilian playing in the Premier League when Hull got promoted and he had some wonderful moments and similar to Roque Santa Cruz I just have you know memories of a kid watching match of the day back in the day and Giovanni would absolutely rip it up with a moment of magic for Hull scored a worldie of a goal against Arsenal which I remember but for Hull to be fair I was a little bit split between probably three players who have enjoyed watching most there Giovanni Jared Bowen who you know we've spoken about countless times on the channel in years gone by and Abel Hernandez as well who I also was quite fond of but uh, Giovanni just takes it for me for maybe that Brazilian factor. Luton Town, James Justin. Now, I would have gone for Pelly Ruddock, who's probably my favourite Luton player. I just really like the story there, sort of non-league to the championship, obviously, as he's still playing for Luton. Had to go for someone else, and James Justin was the one that really sprung out. You know, he was a player who seemed to really epitomise that uh, Nathan Jones system of them getting promoted from League One to the Championship where they were fullbacks or wingbacks as they probably turned into as they bombed so high up and down the pitch and um, was so integral to that system and off the back of that got his move to Leicester where he's gone to be absolutely fantastic. Middlesbrough, Adama Traore. The fact that we were gifted a season of Adama Traore in the Championship, I just feel absolutely blessed because he was part of a Middlesbrough side, I think under Tony Pulis at the time, that weren't in general the most sort of entertaining side to watch or anything like that but whenever Traore was on the ball, things would absolutely light up. And even in the championship, I stand by him being one of the best dribblers in the world. You know, he's still that to this day. You know, his end product maybe is the thing that gets brought into question at times. But in terms of pure dribbling ability and nothing else, he was magnificent that season in the championship. He'd absolutely just fly past players. And I'd argue was like, one of the most entertaining players ever to watch that season. He was that good. Millwall, Tim Cahill. Now, obviously, I can't claim to have watched Tim Cahill during his first stint with Millwall. I was too young at the time. And obviously, when I was properly getting into football, he was playing at Everton by that point. But really enjoyed watching him play for Everton. And I remember 
all the hype and you couldn't help but getting swept up along with it with all the Millwall fans when it was thought that he could be making that return to Millwall and then he eventually did in 2017. Just went on to play the 10 matches for them but even during that time, similar to what we were talking about with Joe Cole playing for Coventry, you know, seeing Tim Cahill in the Championship was just so cool. Nottingham Forest, Paul McKenna. Now this one is a little bit of a biased pick because he played over 400 games for North End, you know, as a local lad who came up through Preston, ended up leaving to Nottingham Forest forest during about 2009 um, and I remember being absolutely gutted at the time you know you know when Roy Keane says like you know captains don't come as they used to Paul McKenna is that sort of old school captain who in the championship was an absolute colossal of a play you know he could do absolutely everything from central midfield he could ping passes he could get stuck in tackle and I think was good enough to play in the Premier League it just never quite happened for him um, in his career that way but went to Nottingham Forest and was still absolutely fantastic I remember actually his first goal for Nottingham Forest came against Preston it was an absolute worldie of a strike from about 25 yards out and yeah I distinctly remember when I was first going on to watch Preston and Paul McKenna being one of my favourite players and when he left the forest I was absolutely gutted. Peter Britt, I think I'm going to go for Craig McHale Smith, you know I remember watching the original like championship show on ITV back in the day. I remember watching that show and every week for Peter Britt Craig McHale Smith seems to be popping up with a goal obviously. On the back of doing really well for Peter Britt, I think he made the move over to Brighton after that didn't he? But prolific goal scorer and Peter Britt have had quite a few of them to be fair um, over the years haven't they? Preston North End, I'm going to go for Joey Garner. There were quite a few names that I was considering for this one. Ben Pearson probably comes in at a very close number two for me personally. Absolutely love the guy. Aidan McGeady for that one season we had with him. But everything taken into consideration, I think Joe Garner is my personal number one. A Preston fan who made it at North End when we were in a tough situation and he was the real spearhead for us getting promoted back to the championship. You know, those two seasons we had with him um, in League One where he was absolutely prolific, putting up 20 goals in each season. He was by far and away the best wind-up merchant in the Football League at the time as well. Every opposition ground that we went to, every travelling away support that came to Deepdale, absolutely despised Joe Garner and that just made you love him even more and the numbers that he was putting up, the goal he scored against Rotherham which is to this day the best goal that I've ever seen live. Celebrating at Wembley with Joe Garner on the pitch you know, knowing him being a North End fan was uh, just something else. Queen's Park Rangers I'm going to go for the obvious one. I am going to go for Adel Tarapt. But Berrieze is coming in at a very close number two because that last season he had with QPR was something dazzling that I've not seen all too much in the championship. But properly thinking about it, I think Tarapt has to take the crown for my favourite ever player from QPR. He seemed to, he'd always turned up against North End, but I think he always turned up in every championship game um, back in the day. Inside the box, outside the box, as a player to watch, I don't think we've ever got as box office as Adel Tarap to this level. Reading at Ali Al Habzi. Now, I absolutely loved Al Habzi from his time at Wigan. Once again, one of those players on match of the day that I was, I'd always watch out for. And I, I had it in the back of my mind that he was good at Reading, but I had to go back and check. And he was good at Reading. It wasn't just my mind playing tricks on me. Won player of the season in back to back years for them. And I have included a few goalkeepers on this list so far, but in terms of my favourite goalkeepers to have played in the championship that aren't North End keepers. I personally, I'm, Ali Al Habs is right up there. Sheffield United, Paul Coots. I think that Coots is a player who has probably gone quite underrated throughout his career, maybe, because he wasn't always seen as like the main guy in the teams that he's played for. You know, was at Preston. I absolutely loved him um, from his time at North End. Then went to Derby at a time when they were very good. Got an injury during his time there, which obviously um, sidelined him for a little bit of time as well, and then went to Sheffield United. Was a crucial player in that promotion um, from League One to the Championship. And then even in the championship, like I say, probably was one of their more underrated players. Stoke City, I'm going to go for Bojan. I was very close here between Bojan and Ricardo Fuller. Two players who I hold very dear in my heart for different reasons, obviously. Fuller being a former North End player and would absolutely light it up. You know, for a striker, he was absolutely dazzling in the things he could do. But Bojan was... Just such a statement signing from Stoke back in the day and sort of started off that like Stoke Alona era, which was such a fun time. You know, I remember watching Bojan 
Ball Barcelona in like Champions League nights back on like ITV and stuff like that. But he had some wonderful moments throughout his time at Stoke and I'm sure he's still a player that's dearly loved there. Swansea City, Ki Sung Young. Now, once again for Swansea, there were quite a few players who I was considering here, but Swansea were such an enjoyable side to watch from that ride that they had in the Premier League. You know, when they came up and they were this brilliant football inside and the one player that I always go back to, who probably, once again, there's another one that maybe falls into that underrated category a little bit, was Ki Sung Young because he epitomised what they were all about back in the day. Such a tidy player on the ball and would have those moments of magic from midfield. But he was always a bit of a personal favourite for me personally. Um, also really liked Vaughan from his time at Swansea as well, but I think that Ki Sung Young just takes it for Swansea. West Brom, Mateus Pereira. He falls into that category of players who were just box office to watch in the championship, you know. Players like Emi Buendia, Side Ben Rama, Aberieze, Pablo Hernandez, Mateus Pereira was absolutely something special during that promotion season with West Brom in terms of on the ball technique, some of the goals he scored, the link up play. And sometimes for, you know, those types of players, you know, they can be brilliant in the championship and then it doesn't quite translate to the Premier League. But with Pereira, that wasn't the case. You know, he more than stepped up to that next level. And it's a shame really that he's no longer playing his football in England because for me personally, he was a joy to watch week in, week out, wasn't he? But guys, there you have it. There's my personal favourite player from every championship club. I want to get your guys' thoughts on this one in the comments down below. Who's your all-time favourite player from your club and why? What special memories do you have of them? And do you have any other soft spots for any other players of championship clubs in years gone by? Let me know down below. But apart from that, guys, that will now wrap it up for today's video. As always, if you did go and enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content. Apart from that, though, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.